Kia ora. Hello. Welcome to the latest episode of Medieval Sewing Made Easy, Attaching Medieval Fabric Buttons. This time, we're building on the knowledge from previous videos, particularly Medieval Sewing Made Easy, How to Sew Medieval Fabric Buttons, where we made a button from nothing but wool fabric and sewing thread. You'll need to have one of these very buttons to complete the task in this video, so if you haven't watched that episode, go watch it now. You will also probably need to have watched our video, Medieval Sewing Made Easy, Part 5, How to Sew a Buttonhole. It is important to position and sew your buttonholes before attaching your buttons so that you achieve nice, even spacing between them. Now that you're all caught up with making buttonholes and buttons, let's get into attaching the buttons to a garment. I have here a medieval style fabric button, which I demonstrated how to make in our last video, Medieval Sewing Made Easy Part 8. I've got a kirtle sleeve here that I'm putting buttons on. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop this on there. So, I just line it up with its buttonhole. The idea with this is to go around in a circle around the base of the button. So I do the, my first I do my first stitch on one side and I pass my thread through to the opposite side. And then go through the garment again. These are attached onto the very edge of the garment, like so, unlike a modern button, which is usually situated on a placket um, some distance in from the edge. Again, we're working our way around the edge of the button as we did when we actually made the button. So. Now you want to leave a very small gap here between the button and the garment itself. About a millimeter or two, depending on the size of your button. Don't pull the button in tight to the edge. Going through about the same point on the, on the edge there each time. Once you've gone through a few times, I usually make it four or five, so I've got a nice little circle. I just plunge the needle through the base of the button, like that. And leave that tail, because the next thing I'm going to do is use the other tail to wrap a shank for the work that I've just done. So, I'm leaving this tail towards the end where the button is. I wrap, I wrap this thread around those stitches we just made. Just wind it around a few times, just so it's a decent sized shank, around one to two millimeters. Once that's done, pass the needle with that thread on it back through the base of the button and make a secure stitch just through there and emerging where the other tail is. Just like that. Tie those up. Or well, not off in whatever way makes you happy. As long as those are secure and I like to hide those ends inside the button, but you could also knot off and hide your ends inside the garment edge if you prefer. So I just uh, thread the needle, pass it through the button, like so. There we go. There you go. One medieval button on the edge of a garment sleeve. 
20th century style. I'd like to share a few extant sources for applying buttons to garments, mostly dating from the 14th century. Context is king, and it's important to know when and where it is appropriate to apply these buttons to garments. We see these buttons in many images from this period, and this can give us a very general idea of appropriate application. Even better, we can look to extant garments for some idea of how buttons were used. Fabric buttons like these have been found with the textile fragments from medieval London, Parnu in modern day Estonia, and with the textile finds from medieval Greenland. They are also sewn onto the front of the King Charles VI of France's red paw point from the late 14th century. There is also evidence of the use of rows of multiple buttons from clothing fragments found in late medieval Prague. You can see a strong correlation between the examples shown. Some living historians offer other methods of attaching buttons to garment edges, and I urge you to consult these sources if you have a deep interest in historical accuracy. Some of these textile historians have been able to examine the extant fragments or garments in person, while I have not. Again, links are below. That's our video for today. Please check out references and further reading in the description and feel free to share your own experimental archaeology and historical costuming experiences in the comments. I hope this has been helpful to anyone who is learning the basics of medieval sewing. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. I guess uh, this means you must have enjoyed the video, so uh, have fun, stay safe, and keep reenacting. <laughs>